Now, New York's number one news, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Right now, former President Donald Trump is on stage at his first rally since a bullet came within inches of taking his life. And a Brooklyn neighborhood in shock. A mother, her two children, and her mother-in-law are all fatally stabbed inside of an apartment in Bensonhurst. Plus, the fallout continues after the largest global tech outage in history. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Tanya Rivero. We begin tonight with that horrific story in Brooklyn. Three generations of the same family brutally killed. Neighbors say they even heard the screams coming from inside the apartment where that gruesome attack took place. Tonight, a man is in custody. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Janice Yu with the story. We are shocked, both of us. That's why we came here to see what's going on. Neighbors and friends rushed to a first floor apartment Saturday morning, hoping what they heard wasn't true. Police say 56-year-old Fiziva Malvuda was found dead with multiple stab wounds in her neck inside her Bensonhurst apartment on West 8th Street. 27-year-old Maftuna Hakimova, 5-year-old Kamila Shavkatova, and 4-year-old Timur Shavkatov were also found dead inside. Neighbors tell us the two kids were siblings. The 27-year-old was their mother, and the 57-year-old was her mother-in-law. A 24-year-old man is in custody. I heard somebody screaming, so I had a feeling that, you know, something bad happened. Juan Perez lives across the street from the apartment building, and he says he was woken up last night by the cries of anguish as people sat on his stoop. There was multiple men sobbing and crying uncontrollably, and a lot of other multiple men trying to console. At the time, he was unaware of the horrendous scene in the apartment just across the street, but now he says he understands just how much pain those men were in. It had to be that tragic for him to be like that, and shock to me, man. I have three kids right here, too, and nobody wants that. Police have not yet released the relationship between the 24-year-old suspect and the victims, and they also say his name will be released once charges are filed. In Bensonhurst, Janice U, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And let's take a live look outside on this Saturday. Looking a little bit gloomy there. Yeah. Warm, but not quite as uncomfortable as it has been. The sky may be cloudy, but there's no rain in the forecast. At least not yet. That's good. Meteorologist Jeff Smith joins us with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Hopefully that holds yeah, no of rain. Of course, this time of the year, showers and thunderstorms are always around the corner, and that will return into our forecast as we head into the next week. Even right now, there's a couple of thunder showers occurring well north and west of New York City. But in the city itself, yeah, pretty comfortable out there. 79 degrees. Humidity has come up just a little bit, up to 64%. It's not the super dry atmosphere that we had yesterday. And with just enough moisture around, there have been a couple of thunderstorms. One moved on through Dutchess County. That's moving through northern parts of Connecticut. Another downpour here over southern parts of Ulster. But this batch here, we're going to have to keep an eye on. Southern Pike County moving into western parts of Sussex, northern parts of Warren. This can move over, say, northern Morris, eventually northern Passaic, as it weakens probably moving off to the east. You can't rule out a shower, uh, mainly north and west of New York City into the early part of this evening, otherwise pretty quiet out there. Quite warm tomorrow. We're talking about upper 80s, but humidity is still manageable. Uh, more sunshine out there. You can't completely rule out a shower, but I think 95% of the area stays dry for your Sunday. Increasing humidity and thunderstorm chances next week. I think we'll have one pretty good round moving on through here Monday night into the early hours of Tuesday morning. But the most active days look to be Wednesday and Thursday. 72 for a low tonight in the city. Again, you can't rule out that shower mainly north and west early this evening, up to about 88 for a high tomorrow. So probably about five degrees warmer than today. But again, humidity not too bad, maybe hitting 90 on a couple of thermometers west of New York City. Look at those thunderstorm chances really hitting a crescendo by Thursday, but we may dry out just in time for next week, and we'll detail that in your AccuWeather seven-day forecast coming up. Tanya? All right, Jeff, thanks so much. Former President Donald Trump and his newly minted running mate, J.D. Vance, took the stage in their first joint rally as the Republican ticket. This is Mr. Trump's first rally since the assassination attempt. The Secret Service says it greatly increased security measures for today's rally in Michigan, citing the danger 
dangerous potential for copycat attackers. Meanwhile, a growing number of Democrats are pushing for President Joe Biden to drop his re-election bid with the Democratic convention now less than a month away. Eyewitness reporter Anthony Carlo joins us in studio now with more. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Tanya. Well, today Donald Trump is rallying in the critical battleground state of Michigan, where he beat Hillary Clinton in a 2016 by a small margin and lost to President Biden in 2020 by just three percentage points. Vice President Kamala Harris is also headlining a campaign fundraiser in Provincetown, Massachusetts today. All eyes are on her as the uncertainty that plagues the president's continued candidacy goes on. Donald Trump in Grand Rapids, Michigan for his first rally since nearly being assassinated a week ago today. It's also his first rally since he and J.D. Vance became the GOP nominees for president and vice president. We've got an opportunity to do it. We've got an opportunity to win a lot of races up and down the ballot. President Biden has been sick with COVID all week. His doctor says his symptoms are improving, but his support continues to decline. 11 House Democrats are calling on the president to quit the race, including Zoe Lofgren of California, writing, simply put, your candidacy is on a trajectory to lose the White House and potentially impact crucial House and Senate races down ballot. Our country will pay a dreadful price. Sources tell ABC News Biden is now open to discussions about whether to drop out, but remains publicly defiant. Absolutely the president's in this race. You've heard him say that time and time again. A number of top Democrats have joined the chorus, telling Biden he'll lose to Trump and drag them down in Congress, but haven't said so publicly yet. Right now, we've got the Biden-Harris ticket, and that's a ticket uh, that we're going to support. The investigation into Trump's attempted assassination continues. A source tells ABC News searches on the shooter's phone included the date of Trump's rally, major depressive disorder, the Democratic National Convention, and bomb making. We're also learning it's possible the attack could have been thwarted as many as six minutes before the first shot was fired. Now, former national security officials are also urging Biden to exit the race, saying concerns around his candidacy and the likelihood of an electoral college victory for Trump put national security accomplishments and the country at risk. A Biden campaign spokesperson responded by saying this is a time to unify against the national security threat that is Donald Trump. Anthony Carlo, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Guys. Thanks, Anthony. And now to breaking news, a raging fire in East Harlem. Video from a citizen app shows flames consuming the top floor of a four-story apartment building on East 109th Street. You can also see that thick smoke rising into the sky. It appears the building was vacant. Right now, it appears the fire is under control, and so far, no reports of any injuries. It's not clear how the fire started. A grisly car crash leaves a young woman dead in the Bronx. First responders got to the scene at Manita Street and Vielli Avenue in Hunts Point right about 2.30 this morning. Officials say three people in a Ford Focus, two of whom were critically hurt. They are recovering now in the hospital. The driver of a BMW sedan was not injured, and a passenger, though, in that vehicle left the scene before police arrived. It is not clear what led to the crash. New information tonight about a nationwide listeria outbreak linked to sliced deli meats. The CDC is reporting at least 28 cases, including seven in New York and two in New Jersey. Two people have died, including one person from New Jersey. The exact source of the illness remains a mystery. Most who got sick reported eating turkey or liverwurst. Some ate ham. In all cases, the meat came from a deli counter instead of a package. Overseas now, a further escalation of violence today between Israel and Iran-backed Houthis. Israeli airstrikes struck Houthi targets in Yemen, and already the Houthis vow retaliation. Israel's targets included oil storage facilities at a port. The Houthis began the back and forth with a drone attack yesterday in Tel Aviv. A barrage of Israeli airstrikes today in central Gaza. Area hospitals in Gaza's civil defense report at least 13 deaths. They say at least three children and one woman are among the dead. Today's targets included multiple schools run by the United Nations. Israel says Hamas 
operated on those grounds. And the fallout continues after the largest global IT outage in history. Cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike says it has identified the issue and deployed a fix following a faulty software update to computers running Microsoft Windows. Now, the glitch brought airlines, banks, and some emergency systems to a standstill. Tonight, there are still lingering issues at airports. Here's ABC's Ike Inochi. The ripple effects of Friday's massive IT outages are still being felt around the world. Air travel, one of the hardest hit industries, thousands of flights canceled or delayed, stranding passengers who were left staring at so-called blue screen of death error messages on airport screens, some airlines resorting to handwritten boarding passes. The Schlotman family heading to Newark Airport to try and catch a different flight to Palm Beach after a 10-hour delay at LaGuardia. We're going to go there and wait. I'm going to grab a book. Well, my children are going to use the phone and probably TikTok. Banks and other businesses were also impacted. FedEx and UPS warning customers of possible delivery delays. The Department of Homeland Security says the outage also hit 911 dispatch centers in multiple states. And at least a dozen hospitals also had their operations affected. The outage was traced back to what was intended to be a routine software update issued by CrowdStrike, a cybersecurity firm. But that update crashed machine running on Microsoft Windows. According to a Microsoft blog post, 8.5 million Windows devices were impacted. And while CrowdStrike is not owned by Microsoft, it operates largely on their systems. CrowdStrike's CEO apologizing on CNBC. We're deeply sorry for the impact that we've caused to customers, to travelers, to anyone affected by this, including our uh, companies. CrowdStrike has identified, isolated, and deployed a fix for the issue. But the scope of the disruptions show how dependent society is on technology. I think what we do need to work towards as a goal is resilience. And we need to make sure we have backup systems in place, backup plans so that if our primary systems don't work, we have something we can turn to. Ike Giacci, ABC News, New York. A gathering today where it must have been easy to find a ride home. Thousands of Uber and Lyft drivers got together for an appreciation and family day. That event took place at Corona Park in Queens, and at least one non-driver got an invitation. New York City Mayor Eric Adams. The event was not just about fun and relaxation, however. Drivers picked up some valuable information about available social services. Good to know. And next on Eyewitness News at 6, police in Bangladesh reinforce a curfew with a shoot-on-sight order. The latest in the deadly clashes between police and protesters and how the U.S. is responding. Plus, sports fans were shocked to see thousands of people running, pushing, and climbing their way into the Copa America a final last week all without a ticket well now the people who actually bought tickets to that game are filing a lawsuit how much money they want in return And developing right now, the U.S. State Department has raised the travel advisory warning for Bangladesh as it urges Americans to reconsider travel there amid deadly ongoing protests. More than 100 people have been killed in demonstrations over quotas that set aside up to 30 percent of government jobs for families who fought for independence from Pakistan. Police have imposed a strict curfew with a shoot on site order. Here in our, in our area, a rally is planned for tonight in Kensington, Brooklyn, home to a large Bangladeshi-American population. They want to demonstrate solidarity with the protesters. A titan of Texas politics, originally from Queens, has died. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Just last month, Lee disclosed her battle with pancreatic cancer. She previously beat breast cancer. Jackson Lee represented part of Houston in Congress since 1995. She helped lead federal efforts to protect women from domestic violence. She also worked to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Sheila Jackson Lee was 74 years old. Quite a legend. Mm -hmm. And a federal class action lawsuit has been filed over the chaos that erupted at the Copa America final in Miami Gardens Sunday. The lawsuit seeks refunds and reimbursed travel expenses for fans who had tickets but weren't allowed into the match between Argentina and Colombia. Now, the match was delayed by more than an hour after thousands of people without tickets breached security to enter the stadium. The lawsuit claims Hard Rock Stadium, a security firm, and two soccer organizations failed to implement a reasonable security plan.
Next on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock, cloudy skies, but temperatures, they're still warm. It's summer. I like warm. As we take a live look outside, meteorologist Jeff Smith is back with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Before we get to Jeff, we want to welcome to the Eyewitness News weekend team, Tanya Rivero. She's our new weekend yes. anchor with us here, and she's actually been with ABC before. In fact, yep. we got the pictures to prove it. <laughs> Just down, down the block. Down the block and around the corner, right? <laughs> you were right. over at Network? That's right. I was over at Network, anchored there, worked, you know, reported for GMA and all the different uh, shows over there. But I'm so happy to be here. Oh, this is fabulous. In the Eyewitness you. News family, sort of back in the ABC News family, but this is great. We are so happy to have you. We work together. Yes. Oh, a couple we of did. Days. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about how we, we won't only say 20, anything. Yes. Right? <laughs> and we have some pictures of a previous life for you. Yes. Take a look at this. Going way back, I used to, you know, dance professionally with the New York wow. City Ballet, which is also wow. just down the street at Lincoln yes, Center. Yes, right around so, the corner. Yeah. Which, that's you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, glad you twinkled to oh our side. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I was really, <laughs> let me tell you, I was really young in those pictures. But, yes, it was my first love. Okay. Ballet was my first love. But uh, I, I love journalism just as much. Well, welcome to the team. <laughs> Thank Good to have so you. much. So happy to be here. Thanks. Mr. Joe, yeah. Joe and I could hold those poses for about zero seconds. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it hurts, you know, it hurts just looking at us, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys all have the perfect ballet build. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Not looking bad out there. Uh, tomorrow's a pretty nice day. Humidity's still manageably low. Mm -hmm. The humidity comes back, though, with a vengeance as we head into the upcoming week. I don't think we have any heat waves in the forecast, at least for the next 7 to 10 days. Uh, nothing like we've had the past couple of weeks. But, yeah, temperatures get up into the middle 80s. It is late July. It's typically the hottest time of the year, but it'll be pretty normal. The thunderstorm threat will be increasing with that humidity. That temperature right now, 79, feels more like 81. Humidity has come up a little bit, up to 64%. At this hour, the high on the day, 83 after a morning low of 71. That 83 is a couple degrees below average for this time of the year. 101, the record in the state back in 1980. And the sun goes down at 822 these days. It's been a very wet month. We've had very active thunderstorm days out there. We're over an inch above normal. And we're going to be adding to those tallies uh, as we head into the upcoming week. 83 at Newark, 78 at JFK Airport right now. You're 79 at White Plains and at Poughkeepsie. Uh, upper 70s on the island and down the Jersey Shore, 82 at Morristown. A lot of clouds out there today with a little bit of an increase in the humidity. It wasn't that super dry atmosphere that we had yesterday. And guess what? We have a couple of showers, even maybe a rumble of thunder here between I-80 and I-84. We're talking about southern Pike County, northern Warren, moving into western, the western half here of Sussex County, New Jersey. If you kind of extrapolate that, we're talking northern Morris County, northern parts of Passaic up by West Milford, uh, maybe during the next half hour. So you get a quick shower, maybe a brief downpour out there. Overnight tonight, I think all that activity weakens. Outside chance it gets all the way down to the coast during the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Otherwise, tomorrow is a sunnier day than today. Temperatures getting well up to the upper 80s, maybe even approaching 90 on a couple of thermometers. Monday, you'll notice the humidity increasing more markedly and also some more cloud cover. By late in the day Monday, by this time Monday, there could be a couple of thunder showers showing up west of New York City. But it's Monday night where we have a pretty good batch of showers and embedded thunderstorms moving on through the area, through most of the area. Could be some heavy downpours with that. That can even last into very early Tuesday morning before we clear things out, at least temporarily. Maybe a stray thunder shower shows up uh, Tuesday afternoon. 72 for a low tonight. It's a shower in some areas early, and then especially north and west of the city, and then partly to mostly cloudy. Uh, again, that low getting down into the lower 70s. Tomorrow's quite warm, not that humid. A high getting up to about 88. Can't rule out a stray shower, uh, especially north and west of New York City. 95% of the area stays dry tomorrow. Partly cloudy tomorrow night, back down to about 72. Monday's dry for most of the daylight. Maybe a thunder shower shows up late west in New York City. Stormy at night, though. Maybe a leftover storm on Tuesday. And then more active Wednesday, Thursday. Multiple rounds of showers and storms before we clear out and dry out in time for next weekend. You know, I'm a glass half full kind yeah. of girl, so there I'll take that. And the glass will be filled up by some rain. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hopefully not Tuesday night, right? Because there's something Subway going on. Subway series. Yeah, Subway Tuesday night. Yes. Yeah. Tuesday and Just Wednesday. a stray storm uh, okay. Tuesday night. Wednesday looks more active. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yep. Thank Time you. for sports. She's next. Yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about <laughs> sports, actually. USA Basketball. 
Time for sports and consistency, something the Yankees have been looking for. Yesterday, we saw a strong return from the break. Garrett Cole doing his part on the mound of the Yankees' bats. The perfect compliment on the way to the series opening win over the Rays. Looking to string together back-to-back -to -back W's with an afternoon game in the Bronx today. It was Nestor Cordes getting the start for the Yankees. We went into this one winless in his last four starts. Not good and more struggles today. one nothing Rays in the fourth. Two on, two out. Alex Jackson. Yeah, everyone's going to score in this. The three-run home run. All of a sudden, the Yankees find themselves down for nothing they didn't let up next inning Isaac Braid is taking Nestor deep this is a five nothing Tampa Bay lead oh they would keep it going two batters later Randy Arozarena getting in on the home run party 418 footer here that one not coming back that was his first of two home runs of the game Nestor allowed three of those home runs and the Yankees could not recover they fall at home nine won the final as for the Mets and the Marlins, they're underway in Miami. Luis Severino on the bump. He was sharp, struck out seven over six scoreless innings, allowed just two hits. Mets strike first in this one in the fourth. The base is loaded for Francisco Alvarez. Grounds out to short, but a run comes home. So far, that is the only run of the game. New York is up one nothing. They are going to the ninth inning right now. Well, the Americans in trouble early for USA basketball. They were down 14 at the half to South Sudan before taking the lead on a 16-0 run at the end of the third, but this came down to the final minute. This is an Olympics tune-up. U.S. up 99-97. Two would tie it, but JT Thor launches the corner three. How about that? Knocks it down. South Sudan takes the lead with 20 seconds left. This is a scare, my friends. USA on the verge of a stunning upset. They need an answer. Look who provides it. It's LeBron James. Drives right to the lane, gets the go-ahead layup with eight seconds left. USA back on top, 101-100. Last chance for South Sudan, final seconds. Open look, too strong off the glass. Put back, won't go either. Guess what? Team USA survives. This is a tune-up, though, but yeah, exhale now. 101-100 as the Americans breathe a sigh of relief, just like Joe did. And a reminder, the WNBA All-Star Game is tonight. It's an 8.30 tip from Phoenix, and you can watch it right here on Channel 7. Okay, so it's another major without Tiger Woods making it to the weekend moving day at the Open Championship Overseas, where Shane Lowry had the lead at the start of the third round. Lowry, though, with a brutal day today in the Scottish weather, he he is uh, moving just in the wrong direction. Six over on the day to sink uh, to minus one for the tournament. Billy Horschel able to handle the conditions well, though. He shot a two under 69 to get to four under. He's your leader heading into the final round tomorrow. Okay, here's your shot of the day. Now we're all waiting for this. See what came on 17. 238 yard par three in miserable conditions. Oh, yeah, he does. Absolutely no problem for Kim. Hits a perfect three iron. Oh, Look at that. Yeah, he aces it. And by the way, that's the longest hole in one in open history. He is five over for the tournament, but hey, that's a memory of a lifetime at Royal Troon. Oh, wow. wow. God. Congratulations. I mean, Take that, right? Yes. I think he surprised even himself there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was a pretty incredible shot. All right. Well, Sam, thank you so much. Jeff, thank you so much. And Joe, thank you so Welcome much. Welcome to you. Welcoming we'll to We'll see you at 11, first right? Show. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you at 11, too. How many ways can you watch Eyewitness News? All the ways. Right when you're waking up, then rushing to go. However, you roll. Catch Eyewitness News anywhere, in any way. On a break, out and about, or heading home, where Eyewitness News is waiting just for you. Keeping you in the know at your comfort. On your phone, computer, TV, or streaming device, search ABC7 New York. So many ways to watch Eyewitness News live, any way you like it. And no matter where you are, Eyewitness News is everywhere.